Coming up on this week's episode of Insight Weekly, we're discussing the impact that COVID-19 has had on the logistics sector across the globe. We're discussing the effect it's had on the shipping industry, as well as the delays it's causing at border crossings across the globe, and as well as the increase we've seen in human smuggling across Africa. Keep watching to find out more. Hello and welcome to another episode of Insight Weekly. In this week's episode, the Intelligence Fusion team are discussing the impact COVID-19 has had on the logistics industry. We're going from region to region to discuss the latest trends and patterns that we've seen. If you enjoy our content, don't forget to like, share and comment. Let us know what your key takeaways were and ask our analysts some questions. You may just feature on next week's podcast. First of all, we're heading over to Vincent, who's talking to us about what he's seen in the Americas this week. Yes, yeah, so there's several uh, issues impacting logistics in the Americas. Uh, of these uh, delays and increased health checks at border uh, points and ports of entry uh, are one of them. Uh, this is exemplified um, by uh, increased traffic and uh, trucks waiting at the uh, border crossing between Paraguay and Argentina and uh, Puerto Falcón. Uh, and this is due to um, the border being closed after 1 p.m. Uh, and increased health check for drivers. Uh, additionally, what we've seen with logistics at uh, border control is uh, drivers being forced now to wear masks. Uh, so this is shown in uh, between Canada and the U.S. where drivers who want to enter Canada now have to wear masks. Uh, if drivers don't have a mask, uh, they'll be provided one at the border. Uh, additionally, there's been uh, several cases of ships having uh, been quarantined uh, off ports in South America. Uh, so there's been approximately six ships uh, quarantined off the port of Santos in Brazil uh, after several crew members tested uh, positive for COVID-19. Uh, and this has a wide impact on shipping uh, by delaying uh, ships from entering and exiting ports. The second issue uh, would be protests. Uh, so what we've seen in the United States uh, in recent weeks has been uh, truckers protesting uh, due to the low price of freight, uh, which is a price set by freight brokers who are the ones organizing uh, shipments. Uh, so this is in part due to uh, a delay and a slowdown in construction and manufacturing, which has limited the number of shipments uh, being transported across the U.S. Uh, the past approximately 12 days, there's been a small trucking company um, employees protesting outside the White House, demanding a meeting with the Trump administration uh, in order to um, find a solution for small trucking businesses who were included in the stimulus package. Uh, additionally, uh, we've seen protests at Amazon warehouses uh, and other uh, logistic type companies. Uh, and this is in part due to employees uh, fearing uh, for their own safety due to a lack of COVID-19 protective measures. Uh, we've also seen unrelated protests uh, across the, the region, and these protests have an impact on logistics because many of these protests involved uh, burning barricades on roads uh, and uh, just road blockages in general. Uh, finally, uh, fuel shortages in Venezuela have also caused transporters to uh, block roads and block fuel stations uh, and have an impact on the logistics industry in the country. This is made worse by uh, the impact of COVID-19 on the oil industry and an already cr crumbling infrastructure in Venezuela. And uh, what about the security threats such as armed robberies and drug trafficking, uh, Vincent? Yes, yeah, so er early on in the, in the crisis, uh, there were uh, armed robberies of shipments of antibacterial gel and uh, face masks, and we saw these uh, in Brazil. Uh, we've also seen, uh, because of an increased uh, online buying uh, due to the crisis and lockdown measures, uh, there's been an increase in deliveries. Uh, so that provides a target-rich environment for armed robbers. Uh, so we've seen several robberies in Brazil and Rio de Janeiro and the state of Piauí uh, in regards to uh, postal um, vans being robbed and packages being stolen. Uh, additionally, in terms of armed robberies, uh, trucks loaded with food are at particular risk in certain areas of the region, uh, where a few weeks ago when we talked about protests regarding uh, food security, um, 
some of these areas have also seen looting of uh, trucks carrying food parcels to be delivered in the area. So we've seen this uh, in Medellin in Colombia. Uh, finally, in, in regards to drug trafficking, uh, while it's been, uh, there's been some disruption in the drug trafficking supply chain uh, due to some border closures, uh, we've also seen, continued to see uh, seizures of uh, large amounts of cocaine at certain ports uh, around the region in South America, uh, including the Port of Santos again in Brazil. Uh, and this will, is likely to continue. Uh, as ships uh, are one of the primary methods to move the drugs to Europe and North American markets. Uh, and this causes a reputational uh, threat to shipping companies and uh, companies who own uh, containers. Thank you, Vincent. Aaron, can you tell us some of the challenges that uh, the logistics industry faces with regards to COVID-19 across Europe? Yeah, this can cause a big issue for the shipping industry, for example, where there's a set time allocated to unload, transit, and reload cargo. So any of these delays can cause domino effects, which leads to additional costs for everyone uh, involved. And in this, industries, in, in this industry, uh, delay, delays are often not covered by, by insurance companies. So this is a direct example of how the virus can uh, have an impact. But indirectly, um, the response to the virus also poses a, th poses a threat. Um, both the supply and the demand of goods has fallen sharply. And um, right now in Europe, um, this is causing uh, layoffs. Most affected are the industries that rely on passengers, so airlines and ferry services. But uh, the economic crisis will affect other companies as well. Uh, another issue that uh, we see uh, in uh, across countries but also across different areas are the different lockdown rules which hold up traffic along the borders so we saw this early on along europe's borders but now it's also becoming an issue for the uk internally for example where england may have different rules than wales and scotland in terms of the lockdown and i think going forward it will be very challenging to predict where these fault lines will appear. Because up until now, we've seen all countries kind of moving in a similar direction towards the lockdown. Um, but what we'll see going forward is that some countries might be opening up, easing restrictions, while others might impose restrictions again as the virus flares up. So we've seen the virus pop up again in South Korea and Germany, for example. And what you then want to do is isolate these pockets of infection, uh, which is why we might see a lot of sudden regionalized travel, re travel restrictions. Uh, and much, these we have already seen in, in China, where certain cities have been locked down again after the, the virus has been dealt with. Thank you very much, Aaron. And Max, what are you seeing over in Asia and the Middle East? Yeah, so I just wanted to essentially touch on some points that have already been brought up, but I'm going to try and split my section into uh, two. So I'm going to talk first about shipping and then I'm going to talk about trucking and ground transport in general. So in the shipping sector, we've seen similar issues. So, for example, there's been large slowdowns at major uh, at ports. And this is mostly this is due to a variety of reasons. But one is medical checks on personnel who are either working at the ports themselves or working on vessels passing through. Another is staff shortages. So a lot of staff have been uh, unable to unable to travel to, to work due to lockdowns. And also a lot of uh, staff working in the shipping sector are foreign, particularly from countries such as Indonesia, China and uh, India. And as a result, a lot of them have been, um, have been uh, transported back home uh, during the lockdown and uh, during the crisis in order, to, in order to protect them. So we're seeing quite a big staff shortage at certain ports. And this has generally slowed down movement of goods as they pass through it. And as Aaron pointed out, actually, the slow movement of goods has led to uh, uh, a collection of fines being gathered by shipping companies who are being fined for essentially delay in moving their goods away from the ports. And um, a lot of insurance policies don't cover uh, charges that have been acquired because, purely because of delay. And these delays are just going to get worse and worse as manufacturers and retailers in countries uh, don't pick up their goods simply because the market for their goods just isn't there anymore. So they don't need the volume of goods that they did in the first place. So we're seeing essentially a stockpiling of goods in warehouse units at ports 
And so far, we haven't seen an increase or a significant increase in criminal incidents targeting these stockpiling warehouses. But it's uh, certainly a, an issue that's that's worth keeping an eye on from those within within the logistics sector. On the ground, uh, it's essentially it's similar issues. So the movement of of trucks has generally been allowed um, despite the lockdowns, but drivers uh, have been ha have had to go through health checks at the borders. And in some cases, this has, this has led to really quite significant slowdowns and massive traffic jams as drivers get health checks. A lot of the time, these health checking facilities are just simply uh, overwhelmed by the volume of people that they're being uh, tasked to check. Um, and we see a few incidents, actually, where drivers are being quarantined, uh, which is obviously further slowing down the movement. And one case in particular was in Jordan. And this, and this is where a group of locals on the Jordan-Saudi border, they protested over uh, a, a, truck, a group of truck drivers who were being quarantined near to their village at the border. And they, they, didn't, uh, they opposed the idea of having a quarantine center so close to their own village. But these the Jordanian authorities have started taking harsher measures after there was a large outbreak of COVID-19 in Jordan due to a truck driver who had recently returned from, um, from, from uh, another country and he ended up spreading COVID-19 to multiple other people at an iftar meal. So Jordan, as a country, as a case study, have, uh, have increased their, their measures against uh, uh, their and increased health checks. And this, as expected, is going to lead to quite significant slowdowns of movement across, uh, across borders. And also um, worth mentioning, uh, particularly in the Middle East, actually, uh, from a security perspective, transport in the, uh, in the Middle East region has always, been, um, has always been quite tricky, particularly in countries such as Syria and Iraq, where there's uh, quite uh, very active non-state violent groups. So uh, whilst COVID-19 hasn't uh, explicitly affected the, the, the nature of these groups, it's always worth mentioning security as a, as a threat when, when speaking about logistics in the Middle East. And just before I move on, I, I wanted to note um, something that I've noted, two sort of themes, I guess, I've noticed within the region. And one is, um, is border closures throughout the, throughout the country, uh, throughout the region. And um, I think this is particularly relevant to the Middle East, where uh, border closures are often quite sudden and often related to political uh, realities taking place on the ground in a lot of these conflicts during countries. And therefore, I think it's, it's very, always worth keeping an eye on the general political scene, COVID-19 related or not, uh, as well as, um, as, well as uh, more broader themes as well, such as, for example, in Syria, we're seeing Turkey and Russia uh, in quite a delicate relationship. And in the past, when their relationship has worsened, um, Russia has actually closed their border to the Turks and to Turkish trucking. So Turkey's had to find alternative routes. And this COVID-19 breakout has really emphasized the need for countries like Turkey to diversify their routes. Because when the outbreak took place in Iran, Turkey was forced to uh, uh, divert, uh, divert trucking away from Iran. And instead, they've actually gone through the Caspian region across the sea and into Central Asia, which is where much of, uh, much of Turkey's goods go. And whilst currently they are going through Russia as well, there's always a potential for this Russian border to be closed in relation to the very sensitive relationship between Russia and Turkey taking place in Syria. Also worth noting um, on a similar vein, actually, is, the, is protests in the Middle East and both Iraq and Lebanon are seeing really significant protests. And uh, similar to what Vincent said, actually, about the way that protesters are blocking roads, this is uh, road blocking has been a really important part of these protests, especially in Lebanon where protesters have used burning tires and debris to block roads, making logistics incredibly difficult. And in Iraq, uh, a lot of these protests have taken place along the Iraq-Iran border. And with the, the Iraqi protests having distinctly uh, anti-Iran and anti-Farno in general uh, feel to them, it's, it's quite likely, actually, that protesters may block border crossings or at least ports leading to the Iranian border. So again, whilst these aren't strictly related to COVID-19, I do think that certainly worth keeping an eye on from a logistics point of view. So Max, uh, do you find that the COVID-19 outbreak has affected the distribution of aid in the region? Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. I think um, aid distribution has always been difficult, especially in countries such as Yemen and Syria, where there's internal conflicts and therefore internal boundaries. But I think COVID-19 has really solidified these boundaries. So uh, to use Yemen as a case study, Yemen's actually in quite a difficult time right now in that you've got the UAE-backed Southern, Transi Southern Transitional Council have broken away from the Saudi-backed Yemeni government and there's ongoing conflict between them as well as Houthi rebels involved uh, in the fighting as well. So what this has meant is, is a lot of internal boundaries within Yemen. 
And the COVID-19 outbreak has caused the different actors within this conflict to handle their borders slightly differently. So there's been an outbreak in a lot of cities currently controlled by the STC. So they've been closing off their cities on a city by city basis, depending on how bad the breakout is. And it's been quite hard to keep up to date, actually, with which areas are closed and which ones aren't, um, simply because of the, the quite ad hoc basis in which uh, places are being locked down. And this is just made more difficult by the internal boundaries, as uh, one side may choose to completely shut off their border to the other, making aid distribu distribution very difficult. And this is also visible in Syria, where rebel-held Syria is currently relied on border crossings with Turkey um, uh, for aid distribution. So the vast majority of aid does come in, uh, comes in through the Turkish border. But again, rebel groups in Syria have at times quite a weak relationship with Turkey. And also at times we've seen border closures or at least border slowdowns put in place. So again, this isn't a particularly reliable route to, to be taken. And there are currently, there, there's, there are, the rebels are attempting to open up a border checkpoint with the Syrian government, which is incredibly unpopular and it is leading to an incredibly volatile region. So yes, uh, to summarize, the internal uh, boundaries within countries have, do seem to have been solidified due to COVID-19 as both sides try to protect their, their territory from any further outbreaks. So far, uh, COVID-19 response measures taken by governments in Africa has generally involved uh, restrictions on interregional travel. You know, that's within countries, you know, intercity travel. Uh, it has also involved the closing of borders, nighttime curfews, and bans on international flights. With that being said, the transport of essential goods is sort of a, you know, exempt, generally exempt from restrictions. The closure of airports to commercial passenger airlines has affected uh, belly freight. Uh, globally, this has led to a rising in freight rates. Having said that, road freight and seaborne trade, uh, they are the most sort of dominant modes of transport across Africa, you know, with the former especially accounting for 80% of goods traffic. At ports, the processing of essential goods is prioritized over other goods. Um, while operations have continued during lockdowns, it has been at reduced capacity with social distancing measures also in place at ports. So in South Africa, you know, for example, the transnet uh, container ports saw volume uh, throughput dropped by about 50%, but this is also partly due to a drop in demand. Um, a common approach taken by countries in Africa has been also to install sort of sanitary cordons or checkpoints around cities to check incoming and outgoing passengers. Uh, this has caused uh, tailbacks, you know, stretching miles in some cases, and therefore delays. Um, this is the case within countries, you know, such as uh, Kaduna, the Kaduna Abuja road in Nigeria, but also at border crossings, such as, you know, the, the Machipanda border crossing on the Zimbabwe uh, Mozambique border. Uh, also, interestingly, in the, at the Malaba border crossing in Kenya, uh, truck drivers have said that the thieves are taking advantage of the long queues by stealing fuel. So there's also that, you know, increased uh, threat of crime over here. I think there is also what has added more to you know the fear of health authorities is the smuggling of people within countries. You know, uh, so we we've, we've seen this in Ivory Coast where uh, some truck drivers have uh, smuggled uh, people out outside of Abidjan and across borders as well. So you know, such cases have been recorded in West Africa, you know, generally and elsewhere, such as the DRC. Uh, in Senegal, some truck drivers uh, were charging about I think fifty US dollars to transport people, you know, by hiding them in their cabins. So, yeah, I think all this sort of adds to the paranoia of authorities and also m might just result in more stringent measures against the sector. Uh, so some truck drivers have also tested positive for COVID-19. And while this brings added challenges to logistics companies, it will also sort of result in truck drivers facing increased uh, stigmatization. I think as Max, you, you touched on how COVID-19 had affected truck drivers in Jordan. You know, similarly, in, uh, truck drivers have complained in Ethiopia that they have faced uh, harassment from security authorities and f they find it difficult to find accommodation. And I think this is something that we would see more and more, you know, as the COVID-19 outbreak spreads across Africa. Uh, this week, uh, Zambian authorities also closed the Nakonde border crossing in their attempt to stem the outbreak. And Kenya last week introduced tougher measures affecting the logistics sector. All truck drivers will now be required uh, in Kenya, you know, to produce a COVID-19 certificate 
at border crossings and at the Mombasa port and inland uh, container depots. Similar measures were also taken in Guinea last week for truck drivers and their assistants leaving uh, Conakry. And so, Viraj, have there been any attacks on trucks uh, since the outbreak of COVID-19? Yeah, so uh, there were cases in Cape Town uh, in South Africa early on during the lock lockdown. With that being said, you know, the targeting of trucks by protesters is, is a common protest tactic in South Africa, especially around Durban and uh, KwaZulu-Natal. Uh, but going forward, you know, like how you and Max, uh, you know, mentioned, I think with the economic out uh, impact that this outbreak has brought or will bring, I think we will see more protests and while forms of protests generally vary, you know, from country to country, uh, it will bring more challenges and risks to the logistics sector. Thank you very much, team. And don't forget, subscribers to our threat intelligence platform can use the hashtag Insight Weekly on the advanced filtering options to take a closer look at the instance that we've discussed in this week's episode. And whilst you're here, please click subscribe and make sure you're one of the first to watch next week's episode. Until then, stay safe.